بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أنزلناه في ليلة القدر ليلة القدر خير من ألف شهر. And this surah, of course, is uh, telling us that the depth of this, uh, the first verse, the depth of ليلة القدر is such that you cannot fathom it. We have sent down this Quran in Laylatul Qadr. Ma adraka means what makes you know, means nothing can make you know. This is beyond the conceptual ability of human being. What makes you know? What is it? It means you never can know. At least as long as we are in this realm of our existence, we never can know. However, Allah says, I explain to you as much as your uh, comprehensive ability can grasp. First of all, Laylatul Qadr Khayrun Min Al Fishah. It is better than 1,000 months. What does that mean? In what sense it is better than 1,000 months? It means that there is a baraka in this night. You know, baraka is something, is a touch of grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which increases the outcome of everything. That's baraka. That's what we call baraka. Isn't it? For example, Allah gives baraka to your life. What does that mean? It means that although you live, for example, for 60, 70 years, the, I mean the, uh, the, the effective lifespan, however, may Allah make the result of these 70 years like the life of 700 years or 7,000 years. Just like the life of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He lived, he lived 63 years, of course, 63 lunar years, which is about 61 uh, solar year. And the results, the benefits, the proceed of that life was... 60 million years because you see from then till now how many people have been connected to God through him. So his life had barak, has blessed, had blessing. The whole month of Ramadan has barak. What it does it mean that it has barak? It means that whatever you do in this month, the result of it, the outcome of it is given increments by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is increased, it's multiplied. Just you, all of you have heard that you recite one verse of the Quran in this month, it's just like reciting the whole Quran. And fasukum fiha tasbi, even your breath is just like tasbi. Jabir ibn Abdullah says that one day I ju was just passing and the Prophet, uh, after digging his sort of share of khandaq, was just resting, lying back on his, uh, on his back, having his uh, aba under his uh, head. And I saw that because of hunger, he had tied some stones on his stomach so that the pangs of hunger would not uh, give him such much pain. I felt lots of pity for the Prophet. I went home. I said to my wife, what do we have at home? She said that we have a few uh, kilograms of, uh, of barley and we had a small uh, little goat. I said, okay, can you make that barley into bread? And I will uh, slaughter this goat. We make some sort of gravy or something. And I want to invite the prophet to our house tonight. 
uh, okay, they, they did. The cooking is started. He went back, prayed with the prophet, after the prophet, after Isha, he said to prophet, Ya Rasulullah, I want to invite you to my house for dinner. Because I knew that he didn't have anything at home. As I said, it was a very, very hard year. Very difficult. The prophet said, what do you have for dinner? Uh, Jabir said that, oh, I had a goat. I have cooked it and my wife has made some bread, baked some bread. So that's what we have. And suddenly, without me knowing, he called out the prophet that everyone is invited to Jabir's house tonight for dinner. And you can imagine how could hungry people who were all uh, had all worked for the whole day and didn't have anything to eat for the night, how, of course, they could devour any, any food which was available. Jabir says, I was stunned. And I rushed to home before the Prophet comes and said to my wife, Whoa, woo to us. You know what happened? Prophet has invited everyone. These are about 700 people. He has invited everyone to our house for tonight. And uh, my wife told me, apparently the wife was a bit cleverer than Jabba. Uh, what did you say to Prophet? He said, well, I just told him that we have a goat and some bread. He said, okay, so Prophet knows better. Don't worry. And... Uh, God knows how worried I was for 700 people coming to my house for eating for that little bit of little uh, bit of cooking. And then I was relieved when my wife said that. The prophet came, the companions came. And of course, the house was very small. They sat outside. The prophet said, went to the kitchen, put a sort of uh, a cloth of fabric on the uh, on the uh, this uh, pot in which the goat was cooked and something on the, uh, on the oven. And then said, okay, bring dishes. And he himself gave food 10 at a time for people. Everyone ate and everyone was satisfied. And the food was so much that we gave to neighbors as well. This is what we call baraka. Let me uh, just discuss about the meaning of Qadr here. Because the commentators have given different meanings to, uh, to Qadr in this expression of Laylatul Qadr. Some have said that Qadr is from Qutra, power. Of course, this is a sort of very, very minority uh, view among the commentators because Qadr is never used as Qutra or as power. Unfortunately, in most of our uh, uh, English translations, we see that Night of Qadr is uh, translated as Night of Power. Of course, the power of Allah is uh, manifested in this month uh, more than any other night because the angels come down with his commands. However, Laylatul Qadr cannot mean Night of Power. Uh, it should have been Laylatul Qadr rather than Laylatul Qadr. Okay, the other meaning which is mentioned for Qadr here, Qadr as status, Qadr as value. So Laylatul Qadr means the night of a valuable night, a night which gives a status, with a, either which has a status in itself or gives a status, is honor and dignity to those who worship in this night. And that's why, you know, we shouldn't miss, we shouldn't lose even minutes of Laylatul Qadr. We have to use Laylatul Qadr from its beginning to the end. Of course, breaking our fast in itself is an ibadah, is a worship. We do that. And then we shouldn't miss or lose any moment of Laylatul Qadr. Yes, part of that may be spent in discussing knowledge, in listening to khutbah, things like that. But until the very morning, we have to use this because it gives sharaf, it gives honor, it gives dignity to one who performs acts and deeds in this night. The best meaning, which is uh, supported by other verses of the Quran and also supported by narrations from the most knowledgeable of this ummah, that's Ahlul Bayt, uh, is... Uh, 
قدر from تقدیر from measuring from making measures for destiny of what should happen during the year so a night of ordainment night of destiny a night in which Allah decrees his rulings until next year uh, we have the beginning of the year of course from the first of Muharram the lunar year I mean the lunar Arabic name a year however our imams have said that in the higher realm the beginning of the year is Laylatul Qadr why because everything starts on Laylatul Qadr and finishes on Laylatul Qadr next year so that the it matters of the following year is decided on Laylatul Qadr and therefore it is a night of ordainment a night in which destinies until the next year are uh, ordained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is delivered to the higher angels heavenly angels these commands and they come with these commands to the earth giving it to the earthly angels. There's another allusion to this night in Surah Al-Duha. Why we send the Quran down? Because we wanted to warn people. This warning is very important. Warning us not to just uh, spend our lives idly, not to just uh, uh, waste our time in this life. Something else is coming. This is not uh, the whole issue of creation and so on and so forth. Fiha, what happens in this night? Every firm command, ruling, is decided on this night. Now, this Hakim, as Allama Tawa Tawai Rahmatullah mentions very beautifully in his tafsir, he says, Hakim is something which is not distinguished, things which are not distinguished from each other. It is amalgamated. And then they have to somehow separate and be distinguished. This is Hakim, and then the 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 furqa comes fiha yufraqo is separated, is dispatched, is issued. He says that at the higher realm, of course, Allah has destined everything. However, the angels don't know about what has He destined. And when we say destiny, it doesn't mean that human beings are forced, we don't have free will. No, there are certain things for which we don't have free will. It's destined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You never can decide whether you want to be a boy or a girl. You never can decide whether you want to be born in Europe or in Africa or in Asia or whatever else. You never can decide how long you want to live. So these are the things that Allah has destined. And then, of course, our reactions... Uh, against these destinies would give us that free will and would determine what is our position and our rank with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, these commands which are amalgamated, which are unseparated, are quite merged into each other, the commands for one year is separated. Amran min indra. These, of course, are our commands which come. Inna kunna mursalin. We are sending down these commands. We are sending down these commands. So, everything, as we have in narrations, everything which belongs to next year for everyone, whether you are a woman or a kafir, or it, it, it is related to the world of humans or animals or plants or whatever. The command that what should happen is dispatched, brought down, and uh, uh, they come. تَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالرُّوحُ فِيهَا بِأَذْنِ رَبْهِمْ مِنْ كُلَّ Every command which should be 
carried out during that year is brought down, is firm. Is the other meaning of Amrun Hakim is firm ruling. However, of course, the lie of Yel Mashiach, the Aemma was asked, is it possible that something which is ordained or decreed at the night of God to be changed and overturned during the year? Yes, it is. Allah's hand is not tight. The Jews say that Allah has destined something in eternity and he cannot change it. May their hands be tight. His hands are full open. Yes. Maybe something is decreed for you on the day of God, but with some good action, some dua, some supplication, Allah will change it over the year. However, if everything goes as it is, these commands will be in force. <laughs> Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin.